Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered Conversations. I am your host V and today I am alone but don't worry about that because we have a good one. Um, today's topic is am I incompetent? And what really sparked or what sparked, sorry, what sparked this topic for me was I recently had something in my life happen and no, guys don't worry don't stress relax <laughs> but I recently had um, a situation happen where I felt so incompetent I felt wor- like not worthless hopeless like I couldn't help someone in my life right they were going through something and like something was going on and I therefore felt like I out of instinct I obviously wanted to solve the situation but Physically, there was nothing I could do about it, like, at all. Like, I couldn't help that person out. I couldn't, there was nothing that I could do. And I remember going to bed, like, crying and saying, Lord, why can't I fix this? Why can't I do anything? Why am I so incompetent? Like, that is literally the words that were playing in my mind. And I remember God telling me, I did, who said you are incompetent in this moment? And I was like, Lord what do you mean? What do you mean? And he's like, there is something that you could do. And I was like, but I can't. (laughs) And then he's like, then at that moment, he reminded me of the topic or the conversation that he was really talking to me about for this year. And that had to do with faith, right? And okay, let's start with what is faith. Um, Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And let me give you guys a little bit of a backstory. Um, When was it? Two years ago, guys, my faith was on another level. Like nobody could tell me nothing about my faith. I used to, and faith not in like my belief in God, but faith meaning um. I speak things and they happen, right? Obviously through Christ, right? Um, So nobody could tell me anything. Like I would speak and things would change in that moment. I used to call things and things would happen. I used, y'all, you wouldn't tell me nothing. Like at that stage in my life, I was like, there's no way anyone can tell me God is not real. Because in the midst of chaos, I speak things in Jesus' name and it changes, right? last year my faith was at an all-time low guys when I say low it was low there were a lot of things that I was believing God for last year that I thought oh God I thought I had faith for them and looking back right now I did not have faith for them I just said Lord this is I would like this and it will happen Amen. And there was no actual action in my faith or my belief in his capabilities or even believing that those things would happen. Granted, I don't think that God required me or wanted me to have certain things at that time. But I also do think part of the whole problem or not problem, but part of the reason why things didn't work out the way I wanted was because I did not have faith for them to happen. And I'll explain why. I think a lot of the times we operate in a Delulu is the best Delulu kind of situation. We all say that on social media, on TikTok and Instagram. All of us, especially as girlies, we speak how Delulu <laughs> is the best Delulu. And I think a lot of the times in with when it comes to our faith, that's what it is. We are delusional. We think we do have faith and we do not. Right? We, th- we, th- we tell ourselves that we have faith. So that we can try and fool God. And God knows whether you truly have faith or you don't. So you trying to tell yourself that you have it so that God so that God can hear you tell yourself. Is like, he's like, girl, I know you. Like, I, ca- I know you better than anyone. I know you better than yourself. You think I'm going to believe the fact that you think that you have faith right now. So that's also something that I really realized <laughs> this year that, girl... Last year, you were operating in a delusional state and you were trying to fool yourself. And in that, 
you were trying to to trick God into believing that you have faith. And God is not a child. God is here, right? God is woke. He knows what's going on. He's not going to be taken for a fool. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is we need to also realize that we need to seek God's kingdom first. Um, I think I've mentioned this on Aaron's episode, I think, where I mentioned how God's word works together, right? There are verses that speak about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And the verse that speaks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind and the verses that says, I wrote this other one down. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So God tells us that if we ask, it shall be given unto us. Like he says that a couple of times, I think, I believe in Matthew. Unless I have different translations in my mind. But if I'm not mistaken, there's a couple of times where the Lord speaks about us not worrying and us asking and it shall be given, it shall be given unto us, right? However, we need to remember that God is not a God who contradicts himself, right? His word works together. It's cohesive. So like the verses that I mentioned, we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto us, right? So when we want, when we seek God and his kingdom, he works on us and he creates, he remakes us. He makes us new. That's why we say we are born again. It's like a rebirth. You are becoming a new person. And in that process, the Lord changes your mentality and how you think and the reasons why you may want certain things and why you may pray for certain things, right? And in that, when he has transformed you, he knows for a fact that if he's done, when he's doing a work in you and he has changed you, there's no way you can ask for something that is not in God's will. So why would he therefore not grant it to you? And that's how I've been, I've been understanding God's word. Because I used to say, God, why are you saying that ask and it shall be given unto you or ask and and you shall receive like why do you say those things and i'm asking right now but i'm not receiving right one i don't have faith i'm just speak like i'm just quoting god's word but with without truly believing in that but two i am not renewed up here in my mind i'm not asking for things that god believes that are his will for my life right so we need to know that we need to seek god's kingdom we need to renew us we need to allow him to renew our mind and therefore the things that we ask it shall be given to us for example i'll give you an example sorry i've been speaking so fast i need to slow down but um maybe years ago i wanted the fanciest car the biggest house i wanted to have five houses i wanted to because i wanted it to show that i have money and to be successful right according to the world standards right but if god has renewed my mind Sometimes I could still want the same thing, but for a different intention, right? And in this case, for example, if before I wanted 10 houses so that it can look like I'm rich or wealthy or whatever, now I can want five houses. And for those five, it could be a business situation. It's not just to show people that I have five vacant houses that I could choose which day of the week any day of the week which house i want to go to do you understand what i'm saying like my mind changes or if i say okay lord provide me with five houses the lord provides me with five houses and i decide one i'm going to give away with it do you understand the concept of the mind being changed and having allowed god to do that so i think we need to remember those things right also the other thing that i wanted to know um highlight is I watched this podcast of this ex-Satanist who mentioned how God's children don't, like the enemy and the people that work for the enemy knew that God's children don't know their, his promises for them, right? Guys, I, I remember my mom also told me this. He's like, we need to quote the Lord on his word. Like we need to, don't be afraid to be like God, you say, like, you said <laughs> like we shouldn't be like hesitant on doing that we shouldn't feel like oh we such bad people i even watched a video of joe l barnes i think the one that used to sing with maverick he mentioned how god doesn't feel some type of way when you tell him real things he's not gonna be like this child is disrespectful death upon them like he's not gonna do that he understands that you're a human being you have human emotions you go through human things right 
obviously we need to constantly fight against um the flesh but he knows right so if you go to him and say lord i am disappointed because of one two three it's fine he's going to deal with you with regards to that so us also going not questioning i i don't know if it's questioning the lord per se but saying lord you said this in your word and that's how i operate now like guys with my faith if i'm believing god for something i literally quote him on his word i say in your word you said this right in your word you said abraham's blessings are mine lord where are those blessings right obviously you've blessed me with a house to sleep in food to eat but I'm gonna need some of that, ble- some more of those blessings, right? In your word, you say, "If I ask, it shall be given to to me." You, if I ask, I would like, um, who is it? Oh gosh, hold on, hold on. If I ask for Sol- Solom- um, Solomon, King Solomon's um, wisdom, where is it? I'm gonna need it because that's what your word says, and I think. Mm-hmm. The enemy has gotten us there, guys, where we do not know, first of all, God's word. We do not know what God has promised us. And everything is in his word. Sometimes we feel like we need to go so hard in prayer and be like fasting for five, ten days to understand God's promises. And a lot of them are in his word. Yes, there might be specific ones that he can have for just for you. And they are very specific and detailed. And yes, you can go to God for that. What I'm talking about is knowing that god has told you you have dominion right so that means when you operate and when you have faith you need to operate in a space of dominion there's times where we need to pray guys this is something that i learned recently there are times where you need to pray and it's cute and you're like father god thank you for this day thank you for these blessings i pray abundant blessings over my life and blessings in you know you pray like that there are times where that's okay but there are times where you are like now it's like guys i'm done with those lord i'm not saying i don't do them sometimes i still do because of (laughs) because of habits sometimes um but i've moved past that time to play is is done now i speak with the authority that god has given us right i speak in faith and boldness i say lord I'm ex- I'm speaking in the name of Jesus that this is going to change. And I don't know how and this is one of I'm quoting myself now. These are this is the like the thing that I say the most. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where. That's something you told me not to worry about, but I know you're going to make it happen. In Jesus name, amen. Like now I'm keeping it simple. There's no decorated prayer. There's no oh this sounds very majestic and there's no time for that right we are constantly at war and even praying against certain things to pray like oh father uh, guys i'm not saying it's wrong please don't misunderstand me i'm not saying that that is wrong what i'm saying is we need to stand firm and remember that god has given us dominion and we need to operate in that headspace um also the other thing that i wanted to mention is um Sometimes there are times where God doesn't give us what we want, even though we have faith when we want it. That's fine. But right now I want to highlight the spirit realm and our faith and things coming to pass. Like I'm tying all of this together, right? Sometimes God has released our promises and our blessings in the spirit and we have to claim them in order to receive them so when when you start to get tired of praying and that's why i say there's time for praying for certain things there's time for different kinds of prayer there's time for lord please i ask in this and there's time for lord i believe that this is mine right or or there's time for lord this will be mine and there's time for lord i am received i have received the promise that you have granted me i think i operate in those kind of three spheres right or spaces Mentally, I don't know. I'm going to break it down how it is here. (laughs) Stay with me. So there are times where I say, Lord, this is what I'm asking for. Humbly. Coming to him like humbly so. 
right? And then there's a time where I come to him where I'm like, Lord, this is going to happen. I don't know how, I'd, especially after he has confirmed that what I'm requesting is according to his will. Then I come with, Lord, this is what's going to happen. I pray in Jesus' name that this is what's going to happen. Then I move from that space to, when I, especially when I f- closely feel that the promise is, is going, I'm going to receive the promise of the blessing. That's where I move to, it is finished. I literally use God's word. It is finished, right? I say, Lord, it is done. I have received it, right? And that's me basically claiming it in the spirit realm and claiming it into the physical, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So sometimes, and I remember this other pastor at church mentioned it, a guest pastor. He was like, sometimes your blessings are already received. You are sitting there thinking, oh Lord, and you're giving up. But they've already been received and they're in the spirit realm. And sometimes even the enemy, that's where he can come and steal those things, right? So we need to know our authority. We need to know that we have dominion and we need to speak things. God's word said, if you tell this mountain to move, it will move. So you need to, op- guys, like we need to start taking God's word like literal and don't think that it's a fantasy or like some some tale take it literal right so the other thing that is linked to why um i'm speaking about this is um feeling incompetent right i mentioned how um what sparked this whole conversation or, or topic is the fact that I recently felt very incompetent and hopeless and I felt like I can't do anything for a loved one, right? Um, but that's where God also reminded me of. God says the power of life and death is in your tongue, right? What verse is that? I want to give you guys verses to go and read. I don't like speaking and you guys don't know the verses. Um Proverbs 18.21, the, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit, right? So again, I always say link God's verses together. I always do that. I don't just take only one verse. I put them together like, like a, how do I explain it? Like everything links to me in my mind. So, um, sorry guys, I just want to, read another verse for you i can't find it i have so many verses but anyway so power of life and death is in in that in our tongue and god really highlighted this um when he when i was asking him lord i feel so incompetent i don't know what to do there's nothing i could do that's when he highlighted for me and he's like you do have something to do he mentioned to me how the same faith i've been speaking to you about since december And I've been saying to you personally that I want your faith to go back to where it was and be better than that. It wasn't only for you. Guys, we have the power and authority to change people's lives. Like the power and authority that God has given us is not only for us. And I think sometimes we forget that, right? God was telling me how... um, the same way you speak life into your own life is the same way you can change this person's situation in prayer. If that means in your life you were down on your knees decreeing and declaring, what is stopping you from doing that for another person? And it reminded me how we're so quick to give up or stop praying for other people versus for ourselves. Yo. I was like, Lord, you're calling me out. Yeah, you're calling me out. And he's like, yeah. For other people, you pray for a day or two. For yourself, you will pray for three months, six months, a year, praying for the same thing consistently. But And things will happen because you do believe and you have faith of a mustard seed, which is Matthew 17, 20, right? You have faith of a mustard seed. You, you take on the position that God has given you and you have this authority speaking life into your own life. Remember, power of life and death is in the tongue. Speaking life into your own life, yet you fail to do that with other people. I was like, damn. Okay. Okay. And he's like, this is your time to do that for this person. And I'll say, okay. So sometimes other people's 
and this is um they always say this about maybe the ministry that you're in you, all your blessings are for you are blessed to bless somebody else right do not know if that is directly in the word but i do believe that god blesses us so that we can also be a blessing right but also i believe that god has given us authority and faith and dominion so that we can intercede and pray for other people because the same way where we're supposed to like have community right and the the whole concept of also having community is the fact that when you are weak they are strong so it, you go to them when you're weak and because in times of weakness you don't have strength to pray for yourself therefore your community is the one that in, like steps in and prays on your behalf so it's the same concept for blessings in other people's lives or change that we want to see in other people's life we need to continue to pray for them the way we pray for ourselves and that's why i believe that also links to love your love your neighbor as you love yourself is because like you are literally supposed to be going as hard as you go for yourself for them so these are like things that god has been speaking to me about and he's just been reminding me that he, we are not incompetent it, there's like even though in the physical we cannot do anything like even if we try there's no way you can't do something spiritually right so we need to continue to pray for people we need to continue to pray for ourselves we need to continue to carry people in prayer And yeah guys that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um like, share and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.